Oh my goodness, I'm hoping I'm streaming. That was a rough show. I got a new software live stream, folks. And I didn't... I guess I didn't set the savings properly. I done it this afternoon and got away with it. It was a good stream. Everything looked good, so I'm hoping this one's okay. And I'll just assume it is while I wait for the comments to show up. And I'll just start talking anyway. I'll bring that down here. Hi, Sergeant York. Stacy Lane. Diver. Miss Milky. I don't know if I'm streaming, but I'm waving. Sylvia. Aqua. One, two, three. And I'll wait for some comments, but I'm just going to start yakking. Hi, Carrie. Yeah, it looks like I got everybody. I imagine. <sighs> that was pretty rough. <laughs> Trying to get the new software to stream. Okay, so uh, I'll just start talking while I'm waiting for some comments. Because it always takes like a minute for the comments to start rolling after I go... Uh, November the 14, 2011, Xeon known to cause dramatic increase in lung cancer. Still don't see no comments. I know they're coming. Bombards humans with very powerful x-rays. Turns into cesium. And XENON, Xenon from Fukushima, uh, was uh, 2.5 times Chernobyl. But that was in November the 14, 2011. That was before all the dirt came out. And I still don't see any comments. Don't know if I'm streaming. And if I run another bandwidth from my site, which is what I'm about to do right here right now, that might help. I don't know. I go through this a lot. And this is new software, so once we establish it... Yeah, it looks like I'm streaming. Looks like I'm streaming! I keep looking back and forth at screens, so everybody's probably, Dana, you're streaming. I heard my own voice that time, so it must be so. <laughs> Just got to wait for the comments to catch up. Audio sh super slow. So we've got some people saying good, other people saying slow. No watermark. No, I got a different software, Scott. Hi, Laura. How are you? Thank you for joining us tonight. Lisa, Nuda, Scott, Anthony, Cursor K, Hetzpa, uh, Gorilla, Kevin. Thank you. Miss Milky's playing with her audio now. Ooh. It's pretty cool. Thanks for telling us. Yeah, everything looks good. So we got new software, had a lot of trouble, been at it all night, been at it all morning, took a break for an hour, played guitar, straight back at it, streamed at noon, crashed after that for a few hours. And I've been pretty slow motion up to this point. And I said, well, an hour before I come on stream, I'll just... I'll get started. But an hour before I come on stream, I said, well, I better go back in and make sure I know what I'm doing, how to import it, how to... Uh, it was something else. So here we go. Hi, Rob. Yeah, audio and videos are excellent. That's so great to hear. I'm going to take a screen capture of my settings after so I don't have another night like I had tonight. <laughs> Holy crap. That was rough. Uh, surface forecast shows radioactive xenon 133 lingering over Florida. Now, that turns to cesium after, but uh, that's got a 300-year life. Do people really think that California, all that stuff that I done last night with, uh, this is not, this is not a uh, Dana advertisement. That was pretty wild when I heard her voice. I just, not digressed, I just want to say that uh, it lingered over Florida. So what does that mean, you know? 
Did they hang around up in the sky and just like stare at everybody when they were going, you know, I ought to come down there and give you a good old dose of radiation, no? And they said, nah, you know, I'm just going to go on over and find the Texans or find the Mexicans or... No, it doesn't work like that. It's invisible snow. And, it's, and so uh, once it hits the ground, it gets into the ground. But the buckyballs that also came along with it, there was two different types of radiation fallout when you want to think about it. Because the buckyballs, and I didn't put the links below, I put them in and after. I knew I forgot something. I was playing around with all these controls. There's supposed to be a bunch of links to other people and other versions of Fukushima for everybody, so everybody got a different narrative. So you can get all the narratives if they actually take the time. And on, and on this particular scenario, you need to do that. Last night I attempted to give you, and I'm going to redo that video from last night with all the pictures, all the audios from all of those stories, maybe even some of the comments. I'm just going to go right to hell on it somewhere in the next day or two that'll be coming up and uh, let me see if people deny it then let me see if people deny it see because you got 60 different narratives now that's what I done, tried to do last night but I had another lady there who was really upset that I was talking over her and um, so we both decided we'd go our own way and we got a new software tonight and I'm going to redo the video tomorrow because she bugged me but I'm, I was shocked that there was 1,500 comments on it, and nobody was, everybody was really sweet about it. Let me keep going. The surface forecast shows radioactive xenon 133 lingering over Florida, so that's not going to go anywhere. And your Geiger counters, you see Fairwinds put another video where how to test your soil for radioactive substances. Whatever. Well, you know, here's whatever in my side of the argument anyway, is once again, you you, you got to get your... And, and this is what I'm trying to tell you all along, was that you got to get your Geiger counter calibrated for what you know came over. And you know the buckyballs, they were the really dangerous ones. And they keep getting re-liberated when your kid is out in the garden or your dog is running around or it rains. Terrible stuff, I know. Or when you get evaporation. See, when it rains, you get evaporation and it lifts them back up out of... Um, you know, the soil and the grass, because it doesn't, uh, the buckyballs don't get salutable, and there'll be a peer review study underneath my video after explaining that to people, how they're one ten thousandth of a millionth of a meter. And just make sure my comment, my videos is all working go Yeah, you're welcome, Anthony. Thank you. Anthony, Anthony. Yeah, 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 yeah. So once again, let me, uh, that was... Uh, March 21st, 2011, March 21st, so 10 days after, there was a huge cloud. It started right away, and uh, that also deposited itself into the ocean. Now, think of one of these hot particles. If they did fall down to the ocean floor, and there's a scenario you can look at, because that probably happened too, when you think about how many radioactive atoms are actually in a piece this big. At the very, very tip of your finger, the piece of the size of a dime produces more radioactive atoms than all the grains of sands and all the beaches on the planet. And reactors run on uranium, plutonium, not, not cesium, not cesium, not iodine. Well, iodine 129. It's okay if you bring down, it's got a 50 million year, what they call a half life, but you're supposed to multiply it by 10. And I know there's a lot of controversy about that. And, but I've heard that from so many nuclear uh, physicists and specialists, and so that's why I'm repeating that. I go on to consensus. I don't go on just, oh, I read that here, I read that there. I need something else that, to bring it together for me before it sticks in my head. It has to keep resonating for me before I can start actually speaking it out loud. I can't even say the sentences unless it has already resonated through me many times before. And because I have watched uh, over the last seven uh, years, seven, eight years, so many lectures from Harvard and Yale and Berkeley or Stanford, Oxford, from countries around the world, even if they're translated, it was a, it was a, a thirst beyond imagination. You can't even imagine what that was like for me for many years. Because um, I not, wasn't a nuclear physicist. And I had a... Hard time wrapping my mind around the actual 
the ins and outs of it, and I still do. And so, and you know, that's understandable because if you look it up, there's like five thousand isotopes. So trying to wrap your mind around each one of them is incredibly hard. But you know, think of it uh, as a boat. And so every boat got a different radar and a different sounder and a different VHF radio, different engines, different hydraulics, different compressors. There's just so many different applications. You have to know them all very well. And then every community, you have to know the warfinger. You have to know the, the cam boys in the harbor. You have to know the safe cam boys in the harbor to tie up to. You have to know the safe wharf to tie up to in every community on the east coast and the west coast of Canada. Think about that one. And then you have to know uh, all the new islands. You have to scrub everything out of your mind. And so that's the kind of life I led. And then all the people. And you had to know all the, you know, the unloaders, the warfinchers, the machine shops, the welders. And you wanted people that were going to get out of bed at any hour. And you wanted people um, that, that uh, had, were the most expensive people, the ones I always saw there, because they knew the most and they got the job done right the first time because I'm going out on the ocean for 100 days. And because I, I guess because I lived like that, and because it was a highball, multi-billion dollar a year operation, and because I lived that life for 100 days a year uh, back to back on the ocean, I was able to switch over to listening to lectures, you know, and really absorb it and keep it in, in context and remember it for the next time I got to come around to it. Because I had to remember those wharfs and wharfingers and people that unloads. I just wanted you to understand that's how I see some things. But the cesium doesn't leave the ground. So it's there for 30 years. If it was there a year ago, if it was there yesterday, if it was there uh, on March 11th, if it was there July 11th, strontium cesium-137, by the way, immediately damages the heart muscle. Immediately. It sequesters in your organs on top of that. But you got, whenever you hear the words, there was iodine-131, well, that's code word to me for plutonium-uranium because that's what reactors are made of, and that's what they spewed out when you had three melted reactors in Fukushima. And I don't know if there's anybody here who's on the fence about Fukushima anymore, but I always include that Chernobyl was one-third the size of Fukushima's smallest reactor, and that Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown, that a million people went through Chernobyl, and that people went out on the roof of Chernobyl for 15 to 20 seconds and then went home. 15 to 20 seconds, count them. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. And now they were, they were by then they were running for the door, and then they went down. They went home, and they never went back to Chernobyl or another site with radiation again. And the people in Fukushima, the the victims, the homeless, the mentally retarded. The incapacitated, the, the victims, the very victims of society itself are used as trash. Uh, really, that resonated with me so much. And that's why I'm here every night. It's because that is, to me, beyond... We have reached the lowest point of society possible where there's zero accountability and that we do that to the most vulnerable of society. That's so why Hitler done one night. He went out and killed all the retarded and all the invalids and all the unwanted, all the marginalized, the brown shirts right before the night of the long knives. Uh, that you got to realize, folks, that putting grabbing these people and putting them on the site for even 15 seconds is atrocious. That's an atrocious, just for 15 seconds to do that to them, obviously when there are 100% meltdowns in Fukushima, and there's three of them, one of them's MOX fuel, is two million times more deadly. You shouldn't be within uh, 50 miles of that plant where the numbers are up around 40 billion Beckwolds, and children are walking right past that to school, and I can go way down that list in it if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Uh, just a confirmation, folks, as I go to the next story, a couple of people want to tell me the stream is looking okay or give me some criticism on the audio or videos or anything that's going on. Nope on the fence here, Dana. No, Stacy's not on no fence. No, bless you. Thank you for being you. Dwayne, uh, Lisa. Hi, Ivan. Penny, Sergeant, again. 
Daz boot mugger. If only got to see Zoe on a crappy video, but that's life. I'm gonna leave it up. I'll leave it up. 1600 comments, dear. That was a lot of fun. You guys are way too kind. This was July 12, 2012. July 11, 2012. A study that CCM-137 immediately damaged the heart muscle, and like the ones back before where uh, the xenon lingered over Florida. So it just rained over Florida. This is a heavy particle. Remember the de depleted uranium over Anderson Cooper in Iraq? That cloud sat there for six days, right? Um, Japan's newborns were treated like guinea pigs, by the way, for study of nuclear weapons and radiations after Hiroshima, Hiroshima. Over 1,200 babies had parts of them shipped to the Americans. So they've been at this a long time. They know what's going on. That's why they're trying to minimize it. Portland area, Portland, had the highest iodine 131 or iodine 129. 15 million year half life, 150 year life. Million, rather, your life. Or the iodine 131. You can't have one without the other, see? That's how I see this. How can you? <laughs> Did the iodine just say, ah, oh, fuck it, we're going to go over to Canada and America? And where'd all the other stuff go? Like, how stupid are people that repeat stuff like that? Right? you got to remember that. 5,100 beckles per square meter. Do you think that went away or something? Do you realize what that is? That's 5,100 disintegrations every second for 300 years if it was just cesium. For 15 million years, it was iodine-129. But no, no, it was iodine-131. <laughs> we know that they found iodine. Of course you did. It was like the radon. The radon, how are you going to find radon out? Like, see, uh, if you got a house, yes, there could be a radon buildup from under the ground. But that's not... Uh, that's not something that we don't know about and that's, that we've always lived with and that all our homes are, are designed to deal with. It's an extraordinarily rare, very friggin' rare. you got better chances of me getting hit by a Soviet satellite in three, two, one. Oh, still here. Now, to go down on the beach like Jakari Jackson with the um, Infowars, and get 400 and somebody else getting 1200 that's not radon you can't get that kind of reading outdoors and you probably wouldn't even get that in a basement of a home and it's worse the worst home out there and there has to be something else going on there they, they probably put uranium in the concrete see remember that they were mixing i got, actually got an article about that where they're mixing uranium and concrete to build uh, homes and highways and everything else and f putting it in the, the car bumpers and everything they got a billion tons to get rid of. They can't dump it all in the ocean. It's too late now. But, um, still good, Starlight. Thank you. Craig. Thank you. Hi, Char. Ain't Jester. Fish fan. New to way. Just saying hi to folks anyway to know what's going on. We're going to keep going here as we're rocking and rolling our way through this one. That I want you to remember that if Portland had... 5,100 Beckwolds, disintegrations per second, every second, and, and the average worker just a few years back was maybe get five Beckwolds in their lifetime, or a year. That was considered unacceptable. It was okay for you to get 5,100 per square meter. So we, you, do you think your child, like the top of your table, where well, your child is waiting for a bus for, you know, every day, day in, stood up in that, and had he tie up their shoelaces, like... Uh, like Fairwinds was saying, right? There's all kinds of ways they're being exposed to it. It's unbelievable. But you got to know about it. But some places are worse. Like California is the worst. Because if you look at all the models, like even look at that model up that I got had for uh, the beginning of this picture, you can see it goes right over, like that really red stuff goes over, smashes right into California and on both sides of it. But you got to take into consideration how the jet streams work. And so there's a lot of places where you don't have these heavy deposits. California is not one of them. And once it hits there, it doesn't go away. Right? It doesn't go away. You can't just keep raising friggin' levels. And the government is just poisoning themselves, their own children. They're murdering their own children. So I'm sick and twisted about this. Like if you live in Texas, you're getting hammered. You think you can escape it? Because you're in Texas. Good luck on that one. Texas, got a, Texas had radioactive clouds over it at the end of March and April, okay? 
And it's not a joke. This is serious stuff. And I don't make this up. This is all from all the typical top, actually, mainstream media, academics, professors. So there's no reason to, um, you know, I don't have time to fabricate or exasperate on anything. I can't. That's, that's the terrifying part is if I actually understood a whole lot more, and I will, tell you what, that was an April 5th government study, February 23rd, 2012, so that I don't never left, that never went away. It got, yeah, you know, some of it got washed back into the ocean, some of it got washed into your rivers, and your pet food, certainly over your cars, or wherever your children walk. And some of the highest numbers that are going to show up off California coastline is going to be equal to Japan. And the, the rain notes they had down there was equal to Japan. They were breathing at least 10 hot buckyballs a day in Texas all the way up to Mexico. Uh, and all the way down through Canada. This is very real. And I have such a massive amount here now. It's overwhelming from all the mainstream media. May the 2nd, 2012. Um, Columbia University Graduate School of Architects, pediatrician, how homes full of the most grossly deformed children we've ever seen in the history of pediatrics all around Chernobyl. See how they hit it? And you remember that story came out back then, right? Well, that's low-level radiation. It's the same thing in Fallujah, Iraq. 80% of the babies are deformed hideously unimaginably, and women don't want to have babies there no more. Hi, Mama Knox. Broken eyes on alert. Cherry again. Steven. Steve. Uh, there's a lot of money in checking soil samples, you know, if you're into that kind of money. I just wanted to throw in that one about Chernobyl because of the stuff I covered last night about low-level radiation. i got a couple more articles I'm going to cover about that peer-reviewed academic studies. That's the whole thing about me is I'm forced to actually cover all bases long before I get on here because I don't oh, you used the Fox News, you know, it's just... But if I give you all the mainstream media, all the professors, all the academics, I educate you for sure, right? What you're hearing is real. And then you can go look it up and make up your own minds. That's the best I could hope to do. And at the same time, I become the more knowledgeable on the stuff I want to be, that I'm the missing links for me. But there's so many nooks and crannies. Thanks, uh, Das Boogie Mugget. Thank you. Yeah, uh, hit, hit the like button, folks. I don't say it. That's probably twice I said this now in over 80 videos. Hit that like button. Uh, if it's a good stream, it's a clean video, the audio is coming out good, definitely. You know, you got to do something. Uh, I can't comment to your, reply to your comments after four or five or ten comments down. So I have 15, 1600 comments in a, a, on a video and I can't say thank you to anybody uh, in the comments section. That's, that's absolutely insanity. And I can't get messages anymore. You know how you should be able to send each other messages, personal messages? Forget about that. That's gone. It's crazy. And uh, i got to get the video out tonight or tomorrow. I was thinking about it at night, thinking about day, all day yesterday. Uh, how to catch the stream and how to email me, message me. That way, set that all up for everybody. And just keep linking that under my videos so people can figure out how to get onto these things, right? Because it can be very confusing, I know. But if you go to my uploads... Where and you click for videos or playlists, well, you also see events. Click that, and then that page that'll refresh your page to the events. And if there's any events showing up, it'll show up at the very top left hand corner of the page. And I usually set up at five o'clock Pacific time. I usually come online, set the event to show, and then about two hours, two and a half hours later, the countdown timer you'll see at that time on the screen is matched up to your country. So look at your clock and come back at that time. I know a lot of people are having problems. So, uh, Aerosol plutonium from Fukushima detected in Europe. In Europe. January the 2nd, 2012. Homes full of... Uh, oh, I went backwards, sorry. Fukushima contamination ocean reached Alaska in under a month. 
April 4, 2012, studied radioactive water to reach Alaska and uh, Hawaii in two years. Also showed it reached Alaska in under a month. That was uh, April 4. That was in one month. The water. The water. Well, you take a stop at Alaska? I said, fuck it. I'm not going any further. Let's see. It. All right, take a little break right here. Wait till I catch up to the government models. I don't want to make them look stupid. Right? I really get upset about some of this. Homeland Security funded a study playing down public's concern over radioactive fallout has huge economic benefits. We're not trying to bamboozle the public. 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 We're not trying to bamboozle the public. That's what they're doing over Great Britain. Eh? Britain. UK. I guess how I feel over there. That's like Fukushima. That's like little Fukushima over there in Britain. That's what we we'll call that place. Sellafield is like little Fukushima. But all the bad adjectives and adjectives. The only problem is, or the difference is, that uh, Sellafield is not, doesn't have three 100% that we know about, three complete meltdowns and detonations, right? Because the detonations filled the site up and a couple of miles past and they found pieces of it apparently 30 miles away. I know people from writers reported they felt the explosion 25 miles away at unit one, two, and three. These were detonations, okay? These were 10-story buildings. And in the ponds above them that I scraped together quite a few videos about, and I got a video up there that after this goes up, I'll go to my front page and I'll put up the video of unit reactors one, two, three, four, five, and six. You want to watch that video if you don't know much about this. I got all and uh, all original pictures, front, back of the reactors, inside the re some of the reactors, five and six, that you're probably not going to find anywhere else in that kind of uh, context. That will help educate you and get you searching and looking and operating. Pictures are below those videos. Say hi to a few people. Hi, Ivan. Hi, Ivan. Knew that. And I, folks, anybody don't know what's going on, I always like to try to say hi to anybody that's commenting because there's so many comments coming through. And because I've read all the comments on my videos, that there's a camaraderie that I have sometimes when I see names. And so I can't help but say hi to people. And I know it's a little distracting for people, uh, but it's my show, okay? And so it's it's, it's uh, just me being honest. That's the only joy, and the only thing I actually get at it is, is I get to say hi to a few people, and we uh, I get to see what they're doing too. Homeland Security funded a study playing down the public's concern May the 3rd, 2012, over radioactive fallout has huge economic benefits. Huge. Homeland Security. 65,000 people that ain't got a chance on this planet of controlling 315 million with guns. Okay, ever goes to shit? Homeland Security better get the fuck out of the way. <laughs> a lot of people are really pissed off with them. I think it's like 700 million people a year gets groped by these creatures. These absolute maggots of society, these parasitic vultures that are out there feeding on you and your loved ones when you fly. And now at train stations and concerts and fucking school proms of all things. 65,000 of them. And I mean, they got these, these people got badges through administration, not legislation. They ain't got health care, they ain't got police retirement benefits, they ain't got law enforcement insurance or health care. They're, they're just pizza. They got they employed after seeing it on a pizza box, not kidding you, yeah, and on uh, coffee cups. So they were looking for a certain type of high quality people, obviously. <laughs> Jesus. And not just the, you know, it was the really chain market pizzas. But anyway, uh, Unit 4, that, that burnt twice really bad. That had massive fires of zirconium burning off the rods. That's, that, there's an, that place is so contaminated, you can never get in that for a couple of hundred years. And BBC and CNN and all of them's got these videos circulate, circulating out there over the last couple of weeks and showing us fake number four billing because uh, go look at my, my video, my recent video a few days back, uh, reactors one, two, three, four, five, and six, and that'll explain that to you. So they, they faked it. They faked unit four, the interior shots, the whole nine yards. Not a joke. It's very real. You can download the pictures underneath the video from Fukushima, TEPCO, and check it all out yourself. 
uh, playing down public's concern over radioactive fallout. Uh, just done that twice for us. Experts, uh, TEPCO data suggests that fission is ongoing. Uh, that was April 21st. Truly scary that nobody in Japan seems to know basics of reactor accident progression. No, of course not, because they got hit with a huge, massive tsunami. The carnage is unimaginable. Uh, the composition of radioactive particles may be more dangerous at Fukushima than Chernobyl. And that was because you sprayed salt water, sulfur. And this stuff blew straight across, the, like the heavy dropping seemed to be going on right smack on top of California's head, but also the entire coastline of the Pacific Rim. But man, California got it and are continuing to get it. They can't get away from it. They live in it. Yeah, it's beautiful. But the problem, folks, is in a couple of years, someone's going to invent glasses that can see radiation. And uh, you're not going to touch the ground when you see, look through those glasses. You're going to jump up in the air and you're going to start flapping your arms because it's going to frighten the shit out of you. It's frightening. Uh, and it's brutal on children. It's absolutely brutal. you got to get out of there. You can't stay there. How can you stay in a spot with that kind of radiation? You see Thunderfoot on a video tonight? That was too friggin' funny. Man. Dummy. You don't know who Thunderfoot is. He's a really popular blogger. Blogger. He's a scientist. And he spent the whole video talking about airplanes and background radiation. Like bananas. What a friggin' idiot, man. I'd probably tear him apart tomorrow night for something to do. What a dummy. Seriously. What a thing to do. He's murdering people by doing that. I'm wondering how much money he got to do that. You have to be pretty naive. Pretty stupid, pretty gullible to make a video like that. What he done. I watched it just before I came on in. I was gobsmacked. I, I got to watch it a couple more times. But uh, that was despicable. And so he's training all the kiddies out there now for the counter arguments you're going to have to listen to. Tell you what, uh, I'll have to come out and hit him tomorrow late under the head, side of the head a couple of times, I guess. And what you can do, you got some people you just got to come out and counter. Hi, Elizabeth. Hi, Sarah Lee. Anna Beck. Stenson. Stacy. Uh, let me see if I can catch him making a Facebook page. New Kushima. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the surfers do. Uh, you know, it's. Hi, Jane. Earthquakes. Yeah, we have earthquakes in Fukushima all the time, every day this month. Japanese website. Yeah, no, no, I mean, they live on a fault line. And so they're getting an average, um, a minimum, I think it is 1,000 to 4,000 a year, depending on some years. So that's three a day. And they had so many aftershocks after that 9.0 that'll last. They keep getting aftershocks just from that one region and some pretty big quakes just from that same region because that activity, once it's sprung, right, that'll continue to be extremely active because it's fractured and it needs to fuse together with lava uh, and everything else. Remember, the ocean does uh, breach the core uh, of Earth in a number of places on this planet, right? The ocean really does uh, breach with the core. Composition is supposed to be much, much more scarier. Who is Thunderfoot? Yeah. Well, you spelled it right, Annie Beck. And uh, instead of putting those O's for foot, put two zeros in, right? The numeral zero. And you'll find his site. I don't know who he is. Uh, he's quite the asshole. I've seen him over the years. But his video is despicable that he's equating a number of times, too. Not not just once, but a number of times with Fukushima, right, isotopes with the background radiation from the sun repeatedly and the ground and everywhere else repeatedly and ta calling it cool. And uh, it's a very, very well done video. It's meant to lull uh, the vulnerable into not worrying about it. So it's kind of interesting how everybody, you had Boing Boing come out, you had Deep Sea News, you had uh, Guardian LV, you got Alex Jones, uh, Chris Busby, you got that creature from Fukushima, Fukushima Facts? What's his name, Drew? What the hell was that all about? He was saying that, I get a load of this one, he was saying that his friend, at Hanford, where there's 41 miles of open pits of yellow cake, uranium-238, 
plutonium, americium, strontium, cesium, through the weaponized production over the last 50 years at Hanford, and that there's 450 million billion confirmed gallons of toxic yellow cake and carcinogens dumped on that site directly into the ground in the 50s and the 60s. And he said, uh, what, but he doesn't mention any of that. He says, well, I know there's one of the guys there that works at Hanford that got cancer, uh, uh, cesium-137, he says. <laughs> this is on the Alex Jones channel today. And he says, uh, and so they done an investigation on it. And they found out it was from Chernobyl. He had eaten some bad moose meat, right, <laughs> or deer meat. That's the most ridiculous story you can imagine. Blaming the cancer that somebody got at Hanford with just 41 miles of open pit of yellow cake. Forget about the 450 billion gallons they dumped directly into the soil, flows into the Columbia River and through past all those communities and out into the Pacific Ocean itself. Forget about that. That's been going on since the 50s. I mean, you know the list that I got on that stuff, right? Everybody knows that I'll do it again one of these days for us. But that's, that's Earth you're looking at. The carnage. And this is just like, because I know it so well, I just need the top peak. And then I can go Three Mile Iron Island. Chernobyl was a 50% meltdown. Um, Iraq. The Tetra River in Russia, they evacuated 7,500 communities. Hanford, 400 billion dumped in the soil. And 41 miles of open pits of yellow cake is not even lined. If you put the garbage at Hanford City dump into a pit, it has to be lined. But at the Hanford Nuclear Waste site, no, just dump it. They got no choice. Because if, if, if they line it at that uh, Hanford Nuclear Facility at those pits, 41 miles of pits, well, then the yellow cake, all you know, they would cause fusion and fission there. They go into his own nuclear reaction, chain reaction, whatever you want to call it. But damage of Unit 2 is what prompted TEPCO to discuss evacuating Fukushima workers. So that's where I left off last night. Okay, I'll close that one. So we got everything in. I say, but I got it. It'll be included in the, the full video that I'm making. But I, I want to remind everybody, I. Yeah, well, um, I hear you, Elizabeth. Solutions, solutions, solutions. Can't know the solutions without knowing what the problem is. And there's a lot of smart people out there, and everybody got to pick a topic that they're really good in. And it's so hard to be versatile in uh, a lot of topics when it's necessary for what I'm doing. I get consumed by trying to continue to be accurate. And so right now I'm going through this phase in my life where I got a couple of hundred headlines I got to get out of my system before I can do anything else. So that's going to take me three or four days, Elizabeth. And then you're right. Then I got to settle down and produce the video about California, but at the same time include the solutions. And every time I do videos, I got to include the solutions, which is what I'm doing here tonight. Get out of the way. Uh, but you also, uh, I always talk about the links below the video, the DCA, Dandelion, I don't talk about enough. It's got every mineral and every nutrition the body needs. And you can't, it's not GMO. How you got to avoid GMO? That's uh, part of the solutions. The solutions are simple. You got to accept what it is and get out of the way of the jet streams. You got to change your habit, get educated. And uh, because everybody got a different lifestyle, everybody got a different kind of uh, condition of where they live. Everybody's limited or everybody's blessed in their own little capacities. That's something that niches they're going to have to figure it out on their own because you're talking about weight, you're talking about heights, you're talking about consumptions, you're talking about, you know, so many other factors you always got to take in, like 65,000 unregulated chemicals. So you got to stay away from harsh chemicals, cleaners in your home for starters because they make you vulnerable. And you got to stay away from the GMO because you can't uptake nutrients. And that's really hard because 85% uh, of everything in your shops and your corner shops and the gas stations is genetically modified. And so if you slip and eat some of that, then you can't take up, take nutrients. And, you know, the comparisons of 427 corn on the cob of GMO to get the same amount of calcium as a single organic corn on the cob is still no good if you've got GMO in your system because you can't uptake the nutrients. 
That's how hideous. And it's not only that, you still got to purge yourself. And you can't purge all of it out of your system. So if you ate it, there's damage done to you. And so that's why the dandelion to me is so important to everybody. Because that's something everybody, rich or poor, or even the homeless, can afford to do. Is go out and find dandelion. But not like some places you can't do it. It's just toxic cities. And so you got to look for ways to order that in. And if you can't, uh, if you live in a... If you're impoverished or something like that, well, you can go buy credit cards uh, at your local pharmacies, I think, and you, which is probably a better way anyway, and then you could use that. That way no one checks your information and you're protecting yourself a little bit more. And so, you you know, but a lot of people, that's a sacrifice to them that they're not willing to make or can't make or are not in a position to make or don't understand how to make it. And, yeah, i got to produce uh, maybe a once a week show, maybe, there's a good idea, Elizabeth, once a week show of just solutions. I don't know if we should be taking iodine tabs every day anymore. I don't, not, not sure, because there's so many different types of iodine. Some of it's really good for you. Uh, but there's, uh, the best thing to do for you, because you can't purge this out of your system. This is what they would have, what they'd done originally. These iodine tablets weren't to be ongoing. And you have to talk to a doctor about that because there is a lot of side effects in that iodine that you got to be knowledgeable about, but it's doable. There's an, a lot, of, an incredible amount, like turmeric changes the game. I'm looking at the microphone instead of the comments or the camera now. Dear sir, please in a nutshell, my ears hum off on any thoughts. i got no idea what you mean, scrutinizer. No more M and M's, Anthony. It's because fallout is basically split, uh, splitting atoms sometimes. Well, the radiation is not going to go away, and and there's no safe level of radiation. But these particular particles, because they're coming from melted reactors and explosions, they were aerosoled and aerosol and aerosoled, um, which means they're so tiny they didn't get through the membrane of your lung and your brain. And so where they cause the cancers, and they will, uh, they, what they like to sequester is some of it, like in your lungs, we know, some of it in your bones, strontiums. But, but see, we don't talk about the uranium and the plutonium ever. That just bombards the body. But this, we're, like, see, I always, in my mind, I'm always thinking of the buckyballs. And once again, once this video comes up, hopefully I'll remember and get all the links below, but it'll be below all my other videos anyway. But I'll find it and get it all back underneath it, because that's not no big deal. Is that the buckyballs, you ingest one of them, you're going to end up with cancer. But this is a fast-growing cancer. This is an intense cancer. And we don't know nothing about this type. There's only been a couple of peer-reviewed studies on the actual phenomenon itself. Uh, and because the phenomenon comes from spraying salt water on, the, on uh, melted cores and we've never had a hundred percent meltdown so there's no peer review studies on that that we know about and then we sprayed salt water and there's no, no one better bothered doing that because no one uh, thought about that would happen or thought of it as a consequence and the LA Times uh, alarm as the West Coast sardines crash likely radiating through the ecosystem the experts warned that Mammals and seabirds are starving and may suffer for years to come. Well, you know, the radiation in the ocean, because it's so much every day coming out of the Fukushima Diachi military industrial uh, byproduct power plants, because you need a million gallons a minute to cool down the reactors when everything was going good. And they're weaponizing 